25 years after the Nor mutiny, Sheerness Dockyard and Fort was found to be literally falling into the sea. A completely new dockyard needed to be built. The man charged with this mammoth task was Scottish engineer John Rennie, who had designed London and East India docks. John Rennie's sons, George and John, were also involved in the rebuilding of the dockyard. John later wrote about it in his autobiography. The engineering works were of the most difficult kind. The foundations were composed of nothing but soft mud and loose quicksands to an almost interminable depth, so that my father was obliged to invent an entirely new system of hollow walls faced with granite in front and brick behind. The Rennies built an engineer's model which was part of the project and survives to this day. The total cost was nearly three million pounds, one million seven hundred of which went to the engineering department. Over a hundred warships were built at the dockyard. One, the Gannet, survives and can be seen here at the historic dockyard Chatham. Come the 20th century, the people of Sheppey would play a full part in the closing chapters of Sheerness as an important naval base during times of war, never more so than during the First World War. Fourteen soldiers and civilians were killed in an aerial attack on Sheerness on 5th of June 1917. Even more catastrophic was the loss of the Princess Irene, in which 250 men, including 76 Sheerness dockyard men, died and the Bullock, in which 750 men perished. Both vessels were lost through internal explosions caused by accidental detonation of their magazines. During the Second World War, the people of Sheerness played their part in the conflict. While the men joined up, women worked in factories and in Sheerness made Union Jack and Ensign flags for the services. Sheerness acted as the base for a large minesweeper flotilla and in 1940 became the assembly point for the famous little ships which took part in the Dunkirk evacuation. Amazingly enough, Sheerness remained free of air raids throughout the war. But the legacy of World War II is still very much with us. On the 20th of August 1944, in strong winds, the USS Richard Montgomery ran aground off Sheerness and over a period of days became stuck fast in the standbank. The ship was finally abandoned on the 25th of September, along with a cargo of some 3,200 tonnes of explosives. Residents of Sheerness have lived with a multi kiloton bomb sitting a couple of miles from their homes. The end of the line for the dockyard came on the 31st of March, 1960. The soldiers and sailors stationed at Sheerness stood in their ranks here at the entrance to the small basin, while the white ensign was lowered for the last time. And so Sheerness Dockyard became Sheerness Docks. But what of the original 19th century dock buildings and landscape? What does the future hold for them? In 1960, after the closure of the dockyard, the first Lord of the Admiralty announced in Parliament that 25 residences and other dockyard buildings had been listed as buildings of national importance. There are plans to demolish this area and develop it. There are also plans to save Sheerness Dockyard and its buildings a historic dockyard and its fine and remarkable buildings that were at the very forefront of Britain's maritime history 
for 300 years.